right before you. So, like I was saying, like you want to you want to stick to a core of one to two pairs max, right? And this could be an indice, and this could be a uh, a forex pair. Right. Or this could be an indice and a crypto or you could be using a Forex pair and an indice or excuse me, a Forex pair and a crypto pair. Like however you see fit, you need a volatile pair and you need a not so volatile pair. Or if you want to just structure yourself to, as if um, a pair is all, you know, go with the indice. That way it's all volatility at the end of the day. So you condition yourself in those market environments. See, me, I was GJ and Ethereum predominantly, right? Once I learned GJ, I was like, all right, cool. I'm making money from here. Started trading Forex with GJ. Um, and then I got into Ethereum. And I was like, dang, that's when the, the bull run was happening with Ethereum a lot, two years ago. Um, and I was like, y'all like this volatility. So it was only Ethereum, right? And I realized once I got there, I was like, all right, cool. That's when I got introduced to some of these big dogs in the industry. Like, oh, no, they don't trade no crypto. They don't trade no GJ. What am I doing wrong? But, you know, and then it was U30. That's when I was hopping in and out of telegrams, um, in and out of signal chats, like, you know, spinning bread house. Some of you may be spinning bread. Uh, my, my monthly subscription was 175. <laughs> like I, I tell the story all the time, the individual just, he just hopped in when he felt like it, but he was already in positions and he was like, you know, if it comes back to this area, I would buy again. But he's already up profit, like 20000 for the day. Like, come on, bro. You're not giving the signal. You're already in the play, right? So um, those are the type of services that I had got into. Just, you know, learn my way through my own peaks and valleys, right? But I, I want to encourage you, like, use the signal check to your advantage, especially if you are in uh, funded challenge scenarios. Right, because I know meeting a certain amount of um, profits for the day kind of helps you, I guess, or to pass the challenge. I don't know how those things go, right? But I just know that that can be an asset to multiple different challenges. I know a lot of people buy these challenges um, here, there, and everywhere. And they have a mass capital, you know what I'm saying, like to play around with, which is so strategic. Like I never even thought about it myself, right? That would be a good idea. I know some people are like uh, managing like, uh, maybe four or five accounts that sum up to like a million dollars, you know what I'm saying? Like of capital. So if they pass, they, they have already passed all the accounts. They're just managing like different accounts to get different payouts. I guess whenever, how, however they, those, uh, those, um, brokers pay out or those individuals, those, uh, funded people pay out. Right. So that's strategic. So signals are an asset, but the thing is, um, I know I'm being like very educational right now, but it's for good reasons. Relying on the signals too much can also hurt you, especially if you haven't done your own proper technical analysis. And also if you have done your own technical analysis and then you see a signal drop and it doesn't go against, it doesn't go with what you believe it, it should go, right? That's why when I see certain signals, I don't necessarily like put in a chat like, nah, that ain't it, that ain't it. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. It's more so saying like, I can see that as a short or I can see that as a potential long, but I don't see that moving just yet. Right. I tell myself that, but then you see me drop my positions in the chat and it goes against what a signal was called. That's only because people are supposed to be reading the charts differently. Right. And this way you can control what signals to take. If that makes sense. Right. Because if you were thinking buy the whole time and you were ready, your price was ready. Price then came down to exactly where you had it at. But let's say the signal drop and it's a sale that somebody's already in, you've already taken away your intent. Right? You've already taken away your intent to buy, right? So you want to make sure that you don't, 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 don't want go against what you believe is your true analysis. And if your analysis is what you believe it is, you need to take that trade. Right. And if you take a loss, don't be upset if the signal was actually the right call. Right. And you you didn't take it. This is learning opportunity for you now to be like, all right, cool. Why did I buy when they were selling or vice versa? Why did I sell when the signal was buy and it actually worked in the buying favor? Now, to your point, what if the play actually goes in your favor and the signal is a is a, is a bad call? 
you now have another learning opportunity because you've trusted your analysis. So it's like I said, like when you learn to get to the point like that, you may catch the analysis like two minutes late and this gives you proper time to be like, all right, cool. Or the signal two minutes late, you may be like, all right, cool. Let me adjust myself. All right, I see why he did that. Or I see why she did that. All right, cool. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually participate in this signal. I may be a few points off, but I know it's going in the direction. You know what I'm saying? You can use situations like that to kind of help you uh guide yourself too, right? So I just wanted to get that by. You know, Ty really doesn't take signals like that. It's because I'm equipped with, you know what I'm saying, like what is what am I seeing for the pair that I'm trading? Right. And as you can see, my my list has grown shorter and shorter. Right. I'm really literally only down to these two. This is like some off the wall shit, but it's the same as this. You see price is 32, 466, and this is 32, 240. Like it's the same Dow Jones though, but this is the correct one. All right. So I kind of want to see if like some brokers are being shysty. So if I can catch the market actually moving let's say to a price of 463 on this one. And this one ends up moving to like a 463 later on. This could be like a quote unquote cheat code. <laughs> like to say, eventually price is going to move up here, but you see, they're the same. All right. They're the exact same. All right. So I just kind of like brought this one up just to show you guys that there are different brokers out here manipulating price. Be careful. All right. Cause you could be reading looking at one thing and then, you just think it's the same, but the price is off. And then next thing you know, you're in a 200 point difference, <laughs> right? So just be careful. Just be careful. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. All right. As, as mentioned, this is no financial advice of any sort. What you choose to do in the market is solely up to you. No live trades will be executed here. This is all chart work analysis. So based on what you're seeing here, anybody that comes across this, Use it as a way of helping you understand what the market may be telling you, All right? All right, cool. All right, so I wanted to start you guys off with the monthly, as you can see. I'm I'm going to break it down. What do we say we covering? Um, uh, liquidity rates, afternoon liquidity rates, and five-minute and one-minute entries. We're going to really just focus on that topic. But I just want to show you guys why I have certain zones mapped out from a higher time frame analysis, right? So I'm going to keep these up here because I want them to make sense. All right, so if we're looking at this right here, we all know this is a liquidity void, right? Space and price. My intent is to see price come back down here. All right, we're not far from it. 31, 3106, I called it earlier in the chat. That's this top line. And then you got like 3905. So if you do the math, it's only a thousand point difference. My thing is, if you're taking notes and you're writing that down, I would keep these really in mind if you see price just rushing down, all right? Because I want you to study like these areas right here. You got to bounce. You got to bounce. You know what I'm saying? And then price course bounce down here. This would be on the lower time frame. But coming in here, you're going to see multiple bounces on the small time frame, right? And this also puts us at a better discounted price to kind of maybe go long and take out these highs. Because right now I know people have been getting manipulated thinking we're going long for so, uh, we're going long for, you know, an extended period of time. But we just may be ready to like complete the rebalance down here, right? So if we go here and bring our fib, right? You see that void? It's right under the 0.618 and right in between the 0.7. All right, known as a sweet spot. All right, known as a sweet spot. Shout out to ICT for that. I, I just know these imaginary lines end up being something, right? So with it coming down here, it gives it at a better discount to buy, to then be aggressive with the buy down here to maybe go finally knock out this 34,948. Give us that 34, um, 500 or even 35,000, 35, honestly. That's what I was thinking price was going to do on like the beginning of February, but we came back down. So that's just kind of like a far-fetched play that if we do see price rushing down, the objective is to catch the higher bid to come down. Honestly, come right back down here, right? What it did this morning. This this happened. This Did this happen this morning? Yeah, this happened this morning, right? When price came right back down here, right? So this would be an ideal target if it does exceed this. Now, we're going to see why we got this area too. 
All right, so let's go to our weekly. So I'm only focused on the zones that's that's current to market conditions right now. So right now, U30 just took a big spike. I don't know what just happened, but she did. And like I said, she crossed that void. That's perfect. But I want you to look down here. This is where I got this zone from. This other void right here. But right here, you this is that gray area from the, the monthly. You see the history of the bounce and we go up here. We came back through, went up here, came right back down, bounce, and went up here. All right. So my thing is, I now have studied like that bounce right there. We came down here. We respected the top of this void. We came down here. So let's just say price comes down here, it comes up here, right? And we're taking out yesterday's trading high, if that's the objective. Because my thing is, if U30, this is notes, if U30 is moving up in the Asian session, anticipate a fall in London and anticipate a push in New York. And nine times out of 10, if it doesn't give that fall in London, she still may be ready to push up in New York and then maybe fall in the afternoon session, right? But it's just all based on where is the stronger imbalance to rebalance. So if you're looking at it, we had one bear, one bull, one bear, right? Another bear. Here, we didn't take out last week's low, right? Well, excuse me, we took out last week's low right here, right? But coming here, starting this one, all right, this is the new Monday. We didn't take out last week's low. So that lets me know that, okay, we didn't take out last week's low. The objective must be buy side. All right, I was I was bullish the whole time, right? Because I caught the position last night here when I was up. But I took a TP at 31,850 levels, right? I was just being smart in my sleep. But I intended 32,400 at the target, right? And we can see it's poss possibly going there, right? So what I'm seeing here is this void got respected. So this is my zone of saying like, all right, cool. This is where my buys would initiate because of the reaction, right? That's just me seeing and respecting simplicity. Right. I'm 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 not overthinking this, guys. And I believe some of you may be attacking the market to be aggressive to say like every day has to be something like um um extravagant when it should be everyday consistency. Like I, I put in and out profits for a reason because with indices we know it gets tricky. So if you play it right, you see I've only been playing with point ones. I haven't been playing with nothing more than that. I know it looks spicy, um, we, we know higher a lot, but it's like, yo, you play it smart, take like a minimum $300 loss and catch a $1,200 win, look at your ratio. You know what I'm saying? So minus, minus 300 points with a point one is $300. You know what I'm saying? Well, 30 points technically. Well, 30 pips, 300 points, that's how we calculate it. But I always set myself to that, that threshold because then I may be on the wrong side of the market. But if I'm real confident in the move, I'll do like a thousand pip stop loss, which would be a hundred pips because the indices move like that. So sometimes it may range from, you know, the thousand, um, not when I, it may range from like a 32,800, right. To, to when we get to a smaller, it may go from 32,800 to 30, 32, 720, and then right back up to like a 33,000. You know what I'm saying? That's just how indices move. So I always want to kind of make sure that I'm not prematurely entering my position. But don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I sometimes become impatient too, right? Because I'm on the one minute. So my 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 positions kind of like have to come at that moment of belief and saying that we just ran a sell side or we ran a buy side. We ran into an inverted or we ran into a void. And we fail to break a low or a high, boom, I'm in. Like, I don't really hesitate. And then I literally be setting tight stop losses. I'm going to show you guys my example from this morning, but also the two executors I had this have, uh, I think in the morning, in the afternoon, whatever they were, right? So this is just basically how I look at the week. Like, we're here. We got a nice swing low happening right here. So this failure to break this low, this could insinuate we're ready to kind of go up and rebalance a lot of this, this funk up here, right? But what am I studying? I also want to bring it to the fact that we got a big void right there, right? So this is just how I view the market, right? All right, this is just how I'm viewing the market. 
if I was to see the market to react, this would be a nice area for it to come to. All right, 32, 6, 04, 32, 839, right? And if you look at that video I dropped in the um, free telegram, I dropped in the VIP too, when I said I want the market to break this void, which we should see within the next two time frames. Um, I wanted to react off of this void and then possibly go up. I see the push through. It looks beautiful. It looks nice. The thing could really pull one of these if it wanted to, all right? But I would just like to see a nice reaction here on a smaller time frame as support in this this yellow zone, right? And that would give me like a better eye, eyes view of saying we could go up here. All right, so let's go to the daily. So like I said, this is the reason. Now this is like May, 2022. You're like, Ty, why, why are you going back that far? It's not a matter of, am I using this as like, when it gets here, sell. It's more so like, if you look at price being filled, coming right back here, coming right back here, Bouncing on it, bouncing on it. You know what I'm saying? These wicks are letting me know that this area is somewhat of a a, a dominant, um, I would say, focal point for me. Because if we bum rush through it and we come down, I don't have to hesitate on the buy no more, right? Because I got history right here, 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 right here and here. But also, if we come, look what the market did here. So I would use this area, this price, right? Not on the week, the weekly to sell it, but 32,661.05, if it was to come to, or well, excuse me, 32,654.86, if it was to come to that area, I wouldn't hesitate to sell because the short could possibly come back down here. That's a nice stretch of like 3,000 points. You know what I'm saying? So you see how, this is how I can kind of gauge because if we go and we break through all of this, my position's up here, I kind of know my next destination could be right here. And then that's how I'm mapping out whether I need to be long or short, right? Based on my higher time frame analysis. Let's go to your daily. So here we are. What just happened? <laughs> right? So we are using, well, it didn't bounce precisely, right? So we could possibly use in this area now as support. I just need a stronger move, though. I need a stronger move. And this is the next daily trading uh, can candle as far as like after six o'clock, all right? So now that we have this with, this, with these guys moving in the morning like this, you also want to study like price closed here, opened up here, came down, tapped this. So we, we could still possibly see some movement down here, but we still got a bear trip value gap. Well, look at this, guys. Look at that. When price closed here, opened up here. All right, so now that I'm up here, I'm going to delete this because, you know, you want to stay close to the market as you're getting closer to the market. So now that I'm here, I'm now studying this void. All right, I'm now studying that void as a, as a closer area of reference, All right? Because we do have an inverted right here. Right, so you know my invert is coming with lines. Right, and this is still a daily, right? So this is, I, I believe some people don't want to take the time just to do this homework. Like if you do this part, like this will be my Sunday's analysis type deal. So even, even though I didn't do anything Sunday, this was already mapped out. So when I got back from the, being on the road, it was like three something. And it was like 345, 355 or something like that. And I seen this and I was like, yo, and this was on the one minute time frame I was on. I was like, it hit my zone. Like, <laughs> like off the rip, I'm going to go ahead and take the bike. And my stop loss was literally right under here. You know, like I caught, I think I caught a little bit on, on the way up, but I put my stop loss right there and it never came back down. All right. So this is what I'm seeing for a daily markup. There's nothing you can really do down here, but look to the left, right? You see these voids right here, right? You see that void right in there, right? But you see the bounce happening right here. So I would even, uh, you see these candles are closing and opening right in this area, right? So I would use it as a reference point to say, yo, price come back down. <laughs> what I tell y'all last week, the 31,834 through, it was 850, 886, I think it was. So we come back down here in the middle of the week. I wouldn't really... I wouldn't get scared, right? Because the point of reference came here, but you got a void right here. 
All right, so if we even come down here, it's like, you know, like, all right, cool, we could possibly see another bounce to finally go up here to, like, fulfill this void, all right? So the thing is, if we're moving an agent session like this, like that quick run up, I, I would just let let London do its thing and get your get your reference of point from London's range, all right? And if you don't know what that means, just, just study what happens between 1.45 a.m. to about 4 a.m. That's going to be a London range every every morning on Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be the move for London, like like a 145 to about a full 430. It's really going to be one range, like where the market is going to range itself. And what happens is New York either kills that low or that high of London and they continue up or down based on what London range was provided. That's like that's like a one sauce, <laughs> literally. All right. So here we are. Now, let's just break this down. I know most people go like, well, if it hits three times, one, two, three, you can use that as a reference. All right. K. Mitch, who is that? Let me see if they in VIP. You becoming a class late, man. Only like letting people in. K. Mitch. I think that's KJ Fly. All right. All right, cool. So like I was saying, let's let's break this down. What you see right here is consolidation. What you're going to get great at is learning how to trade consolidation, right? So even if you just had this, you didn't have anything to the left, you're seeing your bounce here, you're seeing it here. We see we come here, see we come here. We fail to take out that low, we run right back to the zone. We fall, we come back, come right back to the zone. We run back up here. So one, we provide a liquidity on the bottom, and two, we provide a liquidity on the top. High, high, highs, high, high, high. So here we clear this liquidity right here. Look like we're on the way to clear this high. This was the goal for me. Like when even when I bought down here, this was the goal. I was like, yo, if you came down here, this is my goal. But of course, I took profits here and then I re-entered down here. And I believe I sold it short too. I sold it short from up here because it came back to this area and it resisted off of it. Well, I know this probably suckered a lot, a lot of people right here to hold that sale, but I'm like, look at the, the bullish momentum you got taking out that buy side. All right, that's textbook. A run on sell side, quick move up. That's your bullish move right there. If we was looking for inverted, we could we could see price probably come back down to like a 31,814 if it was ready, right? For a strategic um, better price point. But you see this inverted right here. Price came here, shot up. We're now treating this void as what I said in the video as support. And I'm looking at the range. I'm just thinking like there's a high right here that could get knocked off. All right, well, we could come create uh, some, some good rebalance to this inbound. This is the whole imbalance right here if we're looking at it from a bigger scale. Now you have here to here. So... Let me knock out some of these zones for y'all because I'll go back in and I, I just want you to focus on where we're at, All right? So I'll turn this gray, actually. Wait, let me know. So the reason I, I turn that gray, these grays are traditional resistance and your yellow is going to be your traditional support supply and demand if you may but i'm not using that logic this just lets you know that at some point if this acted in resistance and we're above it you're going to see this turn yellow <laughs> right so now i know that if price ever comes back down to this little void right here like this is buying opportunity you can set the stop loss literally right in here if you wanted to all right so we're on the four hours so now i'm seeing that price is here i'm not attempting to make any moves right now is what i'm telling you this is just really me breaking down how I would anticipate and wait to see what this market does um, later in London. Because, you know, the indices move in London, NAS, uh, NU30 primarily, too. They're, they're both move in London, right? All right, so here we are in the one hour. This is my favorite time frame ever. Favorite time frame. You will see me go from the one minute to the one hour a lot. Only because of, look at the direction and, like, clarity I have in what's really going on 
right? And you see how you're able to control the narrative when you keep your chart simple, right? I'm not despising any indicators. I know some of you use them. It's cool. It's just more so when you're able to understand what price is telling you, you want to allow free space like this, right? Because you recognize that is a run on sell side, consecutive one, two, three, four, five, six hours of a of a of a run, and then we have a quick move up. And if we're using fair value gap logic, there's a fair value gap right here that took out buy side, which the market is now aiming probably to take out this buy side right here, right? And then depends on how it takes it out, we have a destination where we can see a reaction. Right, not a drastic fall, but we could see a reaction. The whole point is catch the market when he reacts, not not in the sense of you make a, a a move when he reacts. When I say catch the market when he reacts, when you see that market react, like on certain wicks and certain price points, you need to be studying that because this allows you to see why price is moving the way it's moving. All right, so if this is all of where where are we at? This is today this was sunday into monday so this is london right so ty literally right right in here called like a little bit above here because it had already hit my zone so i was like damn i'm gonna go ahead and take it and i literally went to the left of my chart i found a lowest swing low that it didn't break which was this one and i put my stop loss right under here because i was like clearly dead at that point <laughs> like i was up at four o'clock in the morning after a 10 hour drive so i was like bumping you know small lot size my TP was literally this void, right? And look what happened. Price came here, reacted to the void and fell, which that's a good position to be sleep and wake up to to be like, damn, if I should have, could have, would have held my profit. So what? You hit a profit at will. So if you took that, knowing that we about to come up, I could anticipate price possibly come down here for this inverted, right? But I know this is the bouncing area right here. So but if I also look right here, we got a bounce right here. We got a bounce right here and a bounce right here. Why is price bouncing right there? This is when I go to the left of the chart and see what, what's going on with that bounce. I think that bounce was like right here, 700. So let's see. Let's just do a horizontal line right there. So just to save time. All right. Let's just do right here. Let's see what we got. Is that where the market bounced at or no? Yeah. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It was right here. So I would just probably study, like, even though you see right there, and that's the inverted right here, right? We retested this area, but I got a feeling if we do drop, this would be a good area to consider, like, keeping your eyes on 31589. Not telling you what to do and how to do it, but <laughs> that's also a bullish for value gap. But you see that bounce right there? Sent the market up. You know? History isn't doing nothing but repeating itself. And if this was, shoot, this was October of <laughs> 2022, like, it's not that it's not invalid, but it's like, if history's showing you that this did that, what does it look like it's about to do? <laughs> you know, that's way, way left thinking, right? But on a smaller time frame, it's going to make sense. So I, I'm, I'm just studying that. Those bounces as a reference point, because even right here, we could probably be in an inverted, but also even right here, we could be an inverted on a um, one hour. I mean, excuse me, on a lower time frame. But this is what I have. This is the information I have right now. Does this tell me that I need to do anything? It doesn't. This is more so like now I'm seeing like, okay, I've created my own zones for if price comes down in this area, sounds like a buy, right? Now, of course, when price came up here, it looked like a sell, right? But price is not selling off past this low. Right, of 31, 431. It's not selling off past its low. So that's my point of reference to say, all right, if I have that information, right, based on this swing and even this swing, this is where the fib comes in. All right, we come in here to here. We're still at a discount because we didn't hit the premium, right? So even if I use this swing right here, all right, so I'm going from here, here, to here. Price never still came to a premium, right? So it, no, no, excuse me, it did. It did right here. We sold off, right? 
came right back to the premium, sold off. Where are we at now? We're slightly above the premium, right? So a better sell even initially, price did come up, it has to run this high, right, into the sweet spot. But if we run this high, what does that do now? Because we failed to take out this low and we quickly ran up. We may see the rebalance to go actually take out this high at a 32.985, right? Because we're, we're providing, the thing is, I don't want to say it's a sucker move, but we're providing a lot of buy side liquidity right now, right, with these equal highs. So the thing is, that the, the booby trap could happen where buyers are now entering and we could come down in the middle of the week to get that Friday bull move to come take up all of this. And I don't know why people sleep on it. Like, you 30 like it won't bust that that narrative, right? You can literally see this thing go from 31, 467 to like a 32, 988 in no time. And that's all news. News is going to drive towards where the liquidity is so we can get there sooner, right? Because this provides the, 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 the imbalance or the rebalance much quicker. Because if you did this on an average trading day and you only move this, it's going to take probably another week and a half for this to kind of come up here and get busy if it was coming up here. All right, but right now, this looks like the center of attention with that bearish value you got right here, even right here. But remember, you had this zone on your higher time frame. It's even right here, too. I don't know if you can see it, but this void right here, this could be your area where this was the run on buy side. And now we're coming up here, really rebalancing to come at a level right here to possibly even come down to sweep the lows. All right. But we're in what I'm, what I'm, what I'm helping you guys decipher. This is the middle of the market. This is your premium. You don't want to be really guessing what to do. If you got to guess what to do right now and you're looking to do something, that's the whole point of not doing anything. Because trading trading on a premium, whether you're buying or selling, is bad because it's on the premium. It means it's 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 equal to where price it was, where the range is. So if it's equal, you've now provided yourself with being at a discount. And you've also provided yourself with being above a premium, right? Because we're sitting on the premium. So this is why you got to let price run above it at a higher price. And then you can sell it off. And if it doesn't sell off long, of course, you know, we're selling off now based on this range. But even if you do from here to here, the discount is down here amongst this range, right? So it may look good, but if price comes down here, this is the better bid because now you get at a discount but you just also got history of price just bouncing right here too. So this could be the double bottom. I know most people see that as a pattern too, or, you know, your head and shoulders. Like I think this would be the head and shoulders. <laughs> right. But most people use those patterns. which is cool. If, you, if it's working for you, it's working for you. Not against it. Right. But if we use this as a double bottom, this is liquidity one, but we fail to take out that low. So with that quick move up, and this is our emotion right now, this ain't like one minute candles. Right. You you really want to pay attention to allowing price to deliver down here at some point. Now, if it doesn't, cool. But you also got a void right here. Right. So this is where I would say, OK, if price does come down here and respect this void, I now can say at least at a minimum, no matter what. Somebody got the answer. So from this range. Even if you went with the nearest swing high right there, even though we just exceeded it, right? the bottom of this void puts you at a premium. So that means your eyes should look towards price coming back here. You remember your voids are like a magnet, right? Price is literally pulling them to it, right? Like that uh, Venus flytrap, you know what I'm saying? It's just sitting there. All right, you got it. You know what I'm saying? And now let's go to the objective. All right, because if you if you allow price, one, you got to invert it right there. Two, you got to avoid right there. Then you got a crazy imbalance right here. So if you allow price to just extend itself down to this area, you're not going to be upset, even if you said it's a thousand points. That's a little far fetch. All right, that's why you want to go to small time frames. But if you come, if you allow price, if you buy price down here instead of just because it just because it looks good on the way up and here now you buy it. like even though i said i would buy right here look at your range though you know what i'm saying like that's not that's not ideal right you will really be setting yourself up 
of price and finally come here and then keep going up, right? So just want to, you know what I'm saying, make sure you you understand like inbounds, rebounds, but discounts and premiums too, right? So then I'll just skip the 30 minute that's known for reversals, right? Because see, even right here, we just ran by side, right? So if this, look at the void. So now I can extend this. I would extend this even down even more because I want to buy at a lower price, right? So I want to buy at a lower price and I just got a feeling price may just linger down here, all right? It just may, but we've kind of used this inverted as a bounce right up here, right? We came down here. I caught the buy like right in here, all the way up to like right here, closed it. Then I seen price do this. I was going to take it, but I'm like, it's already afternoon and the volume did get weaker. Landry mentioned that, right? Volume got weaker, right? But if, if you look at how, if you study moves like this, yo, I promise you, this isn't you selling. This is you preparing for a buy, right? Because this is telling you that, hey, we're on a mission. We're going to run the sell side real fast, right? And what time is this happening? This is happening in London, London. Fall, London bridges fall. Quick run up, four o'clock. Right here, we have it. Boom, six o'clock, seven o'clock, retracement. Here, there's the void. You know what I'm saying, like, you see, price really react on the void right there at 8 45. We come up, here we go, 9 30 right here. Big explosive move, right? Come up here, take out that buy side, we fall. If you just would have waited on this liquidity rate, noon, 11 30 to about 12, 12 30. Let's cover that real fast, right? This move right here was my anticipated move. I sold it right here and bought it right here out. You know what I'm saying? Like a thousand, a thousand, three thousand. Right? So of course I wish, of course, I wish I would have held this to this actual void. That would have still been a bag, but I probably wouldn't have re-entered here. I just would have kept my one position rolling. Because by that point, if I'm if I'm three thousand, right here in this void, right? I went, I went with 850. If I'm 3,000 up right here off of one position, doesn't this look like another 3,000? So, you know what I'm saying? What has been a cool, smooth 600, right? I mean, 6,000, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, get to the point where you can appreciate 3,000 in your sleep. Get to the point where you can appreciate, look how short that move happened. $1,000, look how short that move happened. $1,000. So that's 15, 20, 20, oh, excuse me, 30, two hours, two hours, four hours. You know what I'm saying? But you only hit the button once. You feel me? Right. So you get to that point of understanding that New York is going to be where you make your most money. I don't care what Google's out there saying, I made a million dollars in the Asian session or uh, I made a million dollars. It's false, man. It's cap. It's cap. <laughs> like I'm telling you off the rip, you as a trader, if you study the game right, you play your cards right, you are gonna make the most money in New York. So if you fear New York, this is all the more reason you need to get acquainted with the New York session. But that doesn't mean wait till 9:30 to want to be a part of it. You have to understand London in order to participate in New York. Now you don't have to understand it, but you got to see what was provided. And this was only Sunday to Monday's trading, so you still want to trade lightly because the dummy move may happen over the Sunday to Monday, even Tuesday, where you think it's all bullish. And then the back end of the week is bearish, just like it happened last week. We was bullish at the top of the week. And then shit came crashing down. Then we went back up. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're going to fake you out like that to a degree. So they bring in one side of the market early so they can go ahead and get rid of them and actually curate what, where they're intended to go. Now, granted, that's if news doesn't play a part in that, right? That's if news doesn't play a part in that. So to break down liquidity rate, all right, I want to go to a smaller time frame. So you see, even on my 15 minute, I don't have to do much work, guys. I just, y'all see me just adjust it here, right? I just adjust it here. All right, so I want to study. I want I want to take you to now the five minute and one minute. Uh, 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 time frames. Now I'm going to show you my exact executions, right? I'm just going to go to my MT4 and I'm going to go to my point of execution. Now we're on a one minute, right? Because that's where I executed at, right? So we down, way down here, right here. All right, cool. All right, so where was top position at? 
Yeah, I'll drop some fires if you gain some value. I know this is different from like me going crazy calling out a place, <laughs> but um, it's it's important you need this as you're studying, yo. Know? Like, I'm just that guy that if you really take the time and understand what you're doing, like nobody can take that from you. Nobody can take that from you. All right, so my buy came where we at? All right, 31,526. 31,526. I want to say, I want to say right here, I wasn't up at 4.30. I know I wasn't. So I took it right here. I think I took it like right here on this way up, like somewhere right. I don't even think I was up around that time, bro, to be real with you. So, yeah, I think 526, it was around three something. So it had to have been over here, yeah. So I bought in over here based off of this information right here. All right, so me understanding this, all right, me understanding this, help me identify. Wait, let me go over here because my stop loss was right here, okay? Just want to let you know my stop loss was literally like 425. My entry was five, where I say 526, right? So 526. So I was a thousand points, right? I was willing to lose a thousand dollars in my sleep, right? And I didn't get my one to three, right? But if I was willing to lose a thousand times three, nah, what? That is a one to three, right? One, three thousand. I was supposed to get four thousand, but to each his own, right? I could have, but to project projection was 850 because of the void so i played it smart so if i'm just studying this move right now right my entry is over here 353 sometime around here all right so off the rip i'm seeing a failure to take out um sell side right here after the run on sell side quick move up you would anticipate the gap so if i'm looking at the one minute off the rip i, I need to find out where where is a void where is an imbalance right here right so any, anything right here is valid so once this happened, I also said, okay, now this becomes valid. So what I mean by valid is this is the lowest imbalance that sticks out to me. So this, if, for those who don't know, go watch the, um, scroll up in the VIP and watch those consecutive videos that was dropped. And you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. So that right there, this was my area of reference. And I had just zoomed out on a higher time frame for that stop loss position, right? But I want you to study this, okay? You see how this provided right here, right? So this comes here, this bounces here, this comes here, this bounces here, this comes here, right? And then this happens and this happens. Ty enters right here, right? Right around here. Because I'm thinking like, yo, I can't wait for price to come back down here. So I'm about to go to sleep. So when price get up here, mind you, I'm sleep right now. Literally, I'm asleep probably within these 10 minutes. I'm knocked out, <laughs> right? This could have been like a good bear shit, right? You got right, but you see, this happened right here that run now. Of course, in my sleep, I'm not even knowing what's going on right now. But what was my stop loss? My stop loss was literally like 425, right? Price came where literally just to take these guys out, right? This is the this is the London range here. Right, this was the range that was provided in here. Literally, we run them up, take them out, and there we go. Ty's still in a position. So right now at 526, I'm down maybe like $800. You know what I'm saying? So I'm down like 800 right now. Price comes here, right? We bounce here, we bounce here. Look at this one candle. 31474.16. Off of this one candle. Right off of this one candle, right? So we come up here, we come up here, look at that one candle right there. 31, 492, 36. This is that candle. Right. So wherever you you are learning from, um, even with learning with us, right? I just want you to study, even if it's ICT, because he calls out precision on price. Now that's something I did take away from him finding why price stops where it stops. I didn't get that from him to say, you need to go. No, that was always my thing when I started trading. Why is price stopping right here? This is not random. You guys are wicking right here and these bodies are closing right here. Why? Why? I want to know. So this is just me doing my own thorough research to say, hold up. 
you stop it not because of this bullish fair value gap. It's the imbalance you just took out with this bullish fair value gap. So here we are. Now this is a point of reference, right? So price ran through here, came here. You see how you create your own zones? And then your stop loss literally could have been right here. So even if you bought this 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 one price right here, or if you had a a, 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 a buy stop right here, just to price pick you up, what's that? 74 to 34. That's what, 50, 50 points? So if you traded with a 0 0.01, that only would have been $50, and you would have carried that on. You would have been losing, wouldn't lose $50. This thing ran up all the way to 3200 a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't need a lot trading with indices. Somebody asked a question today. Hey, Ty, if I was trading indices, what amount would I need in my trading account? Honestly, yo, you could trade indices with a $300 account and make a thousand and turn it to a thousand in a day just with a point zero one. All right, because it just moves that fast. It's like you want to tighten up stop loss because your margin may bleed a little bit, but 500 is a safety net. I'm not telling you what to do and how to invest, but I'm just saying $500 is a safety net with skill. Thousand to 3,000 is a cushion where you can actually, you know, maintain it. 5,000 minimum, you can be okay with probably running that thing up. This is not financial advice. It's just saying points of reference of how volatile the indices are for you to necessarily want to position yourself to say that I'm comfortable with if my account, because $300 puts you too close to a blown account if you're not used to that volatility, because you may say, okay, I'm not willing to lose more than $50 a day. Yo, it, they do that like shuffling up and down. You know what I'm saying? Just like for consolidation, they just shuffle up and down 50 points, right? So you would have to be spot on like with a 30, 30 point minimum, like stop loss and indices. I'm not saying that's not feasible because we are, we're pinpointing price now, but it's like, you really want to get into a mode where if you can weather losing, like, you know what I'm saying? 50 points and your maybe max is a 0 0.05, you know, just do the math. That's going to be only $250. Like with a $300 account, they're going to knock you out before you even lose that much. $500 account, that's half your account gone. You know what I'm saying? So a 0 0.01, 0 0.02, if you got a minimum of 300 to $500 in a real live account, that's what I would know. I wouldn't trade no more than that lot size, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. And when you get to 1,000, I wouldn't trade no more than a 0 0.1 because every 10 is 100. You know what I'm saying? Every 10 points is 100. Excuse me, every 100 points is 100. All right, so that way, if you think about it, every 1,000 points is 1,000. But if you're looking at it from a point scale, if we go from, uh, let's just say we go from 31,550 to 31,650, if you use a point one, right? If you use a point one, this 31,550 to this 31,650 is $1,000. If you use a point zero one from 31,550 to 31,650, it's $100. That's just a point of reference of what I mean by um points but the system is from 31,550 to 31,650 is a thousand points right but in reference it looks like a hundred but if you if you 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 studying these numbers too on the side that's a thousand points that's why we be saying running a thousand points two thousand points that doesn't necessarily mean you made two thousand dollars but if you use a point one think about it that is every thousand points is a thousand dollars so if you get uh, here to here in no time, you should go ahead and take your position because if you look at it, we went from 441 all the way to 630 before we actually retraced. So that's almost 2,000 points, all right? So almost 1,000 to 1,500 to 1,000, we may see a retracement because this went from 580 all the way to almost 780. So that was almost 2,000 points. So now you can use that as reference. Right. Every one thousand to two thousand points, I probably should take partials or take my position off the board because I can see a retracement. But also, if you look at it, each point of reference is taken out of buy side on the way up. You know what I'm saying? Every thousand to fifteen hundred points. So it's not like it's not going to run forever. But the initial was to get to that void up here. Right. Because if we're superseding here, look how price bounced right here on this void. 
right? Came here, failed to do it. So your stop loss literally could have sat right here under under the equal lows, right? Then we got a quick run up. We this is nine thirty move literally, nine thirty. When you see moves like that, you just want to wait for it to retrace, bro. That's it. That's it. You wait for it to retrace at a better discount. And what I mean by that is once it provides you that swing of motion, you know, just wait for it to come under the premium. But also use what you know. All right. So if it if it if it runs up on that that buy side, you know, you know about inverted gaps, bro. All right. You know about inverted gaps. And that's a void right here, by the way, too. How prices jump. But look at that, you know. And if you want to study, like right here, I was about to say <laughs> buy in the chat, but I, I, like I told y'all, man, me, I'm I'm just in the charts. I'm not really like, you know, just go ahead and buy, go ahead. It's not that I'm not afraid for you guys to lose money, but I'll, I'll tell you guys at the end. But look at that, that void. And you in a bullish fair value gap. You know what I'm saying? But the void is more so what I respect more than anything these days. <laughs> as long as it's with the imbalance and the rebalance too. All right, so twice. Bounce, bounce, went right there. Then we come back to a bullish fair value gap. All right now, I have no point of reference for inverted. So this is why did I buy? I bought right here. All right now, I'm gonna tell you why. All right now, this is this is why I want you to study. 11:30, your position should either be 80% off the board if you're buying or selling. I don't care what it is, but you see, we ran up all New York. So 9:30 happened here. 11:30 is right here. Nothing but upward motion, right? Even though you may have missed all of this down here, it's cool. But this is in the New York range. All right, that's why I said if you study London around like 5 30, 6 o'clock, you can beat the move before New York and not have to worry about stuff like this. All right, but what I mean by liquidity rate while we're here, this is nothing but a liquidity rate, meaning it was one sided all morning, right? And they're just doing nothing to go grab those who bought long too soon. That's it, right? And where do we come right back down to? We came back down to this bullish fair value gap, right? Right in here, right? But I wasn't worried about the bullish fair value gap when I rebought. It was this move that was provided, right? This is the inverted off of the run into sell side. What do we do? We failed to deliver to take out these lows. Bingo, got it. So when that happened, this is where I was looking at the market. And I even said it in the chat, I said that was a quick little liquidity ray from 11.30 to 12.30. All right, all right. So once the market provided me with this, that crazy imbalance, this is my point of reference with price now. Look, here, we come up, we come up, we come up, we never return back here. So all in fairness, let's go to the position. So I did sell. Now, the thing is, I sold and lost twice, right? I lost because my stop loss literally was, so I caught a sell, what was it, 211? 211, I believe it was right in here. Where are we at, 211? I think it was a premature sell. No, it wasn't. It was like, it was like right here, 1115. All right, and I had two positions. Once price came back up in here, I kind of sold off again because I use this as a reference point. All right, and then price kind of ran up, took me out. I had my stop loss at 250 purposely, right above this high. I said, great. So when this was provided, what did Ty do? I did nothing, nothing but the norm. I set one position, right? I think I called this right here. Right here. Now I was aiming for this. But when price actually delivered up in here, I was already in the position on the sale with the run down here. Because once you took out that buy side, I knew what was up. And my stop loss set right, right above here. All right. So when this came down and this failed to take out this low, this is where I took my profit set. I took my profit set, uh, my position when I saw that was 221. My bad. So what's this? So I even caught it lower than that. So I caught it right here. 221 something, 221.53, close enough, right? So I basically saw this fail to take out this. I'm like, all right, cool. I ain't going to add on more position. I ain't going to be greedy. I just took two losses that equated to about, looks like around $700. You know what I'm saying? So when we came down here, we ran, we ran, we ran. I got out the market at, uh, 
Where did I get off on that sale? 32.115. So I guess when the market came back up here, if I'm not mistaken, what was it? I got out right here. All right, I got out right here somewhere here because we. this was the sell side I was aiming for. Discipline, right? When you scalping with the one minute. All right, so we ran here. So I let the market do its thing. I was like, all right, cool, we moving up. My next position on the buy was 32086. So I call right here. Literally, that price point. Well, that's 87, so like a little hair under that. Right? And then I took profits at 32190. Right here. I took profits right here. All right, now I probably took profits because what time is it? It was about to be one o'clock. But in my mind, I was just thinking like, yo, I got my 700 back plus 300. I'll go ahead and take that. You know what I'm saying? Don't be too greedy. You know what I'm saying? Because I got the thousand down right here from that loss. And then I got another thousand up. So basically I got full profits back plus plus some. All right. And those are my two, those are my three moves. If you count the one from this morning. It's early this morning, but this is definitely the type of trading you want to see yourself doing here and get out here, get out. So you don't have to deal with all of this. Like I'm learning to not hold as long as I need to. Right. To see, look, this is a point of reference. When you see this, that's a swing motion to take out buy side. What did we just do? We clear buy side, but still fail to take out that. What do we come right back to? This void. <laughs> But are we treating it as support now? It's at a 250 level. So my thing is, if we crash down here, this is where I want to see some clarity. Like, okay, that's definitely a takeout on buy side. Asian is moving for U30. So now I'm seeing all these lows, seeing all these low reference points. This is where I'm saying that, hey, 209 could be a point of reference where we come right under here, right? But I also see areas where there's imbalance right here but I just have my voice set up just in case the market decides it wants to come back down here, use these as reference points to go up. But my thing is study U30 in London. If she staggers in here, we going up in New York, All right? It's because she's failing to take out anything down here, All right? So this may be a, a way of saying that if I go back to the hour, I initially need to be right here because this puts me at a discount. Right, so I'm not buying up here. Now, if you bought that quick move up, cool. But it's like, you kind of want to be careful buying above premiums. That's all I'm saying. Because now we're sitting above this void, which is it's a good thing, but I need a stronger move here and then coming back down here to go up here. That just makes sense in my eyes of a, a, a technical analysis. But if we come down here, that's even better. Right, because now you put me at a discount even down here. So I'll leave this as reference, like as my point of, points of ex execution. Right. So when you're study when when you're studying liquidity rates, it's then reference. Study how the market reacts between uh morning close, which is eleven thirty to about twelve thirty, and then see the market do its thing, kind of rebalance itself around one to one thirty. Now, this is if New York has provided some type of range. And that's one side. All right. So if the if New York, let's go back to a small time frame. If New York provided all of this one side, that little liquidity rate fell in to take out that low could insinuate we may be ready to go up here. All right. But you always want to bring in reference what is your main higher time frame doing? So we've we definitely created some form of resistance up here. All right. But if we bring up this swing low. Right. We we'll bring up, I'm mean, excuse me, that swing high to the swing low. Guys, we're at a hell of a discount right now. That's why price is necessarily, and I'm saying uh, it's probability, but ideally it's failing to go lower. Right. Because the better sell, if you're going to sell, the better sell to me is if you get up here in this void or we even get up here. But see, if we get up here, we 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 there's a chance that it's high being taken out, right? And then at that point, I'm just following the market at that point. So I would take off my fib. And if price does come above this void, 
it's like if I'm if I'm keen to the selling, I'm just looking for inverted inverted information, right? And I got it right here. Point of reference right here. Got even got a little void right there, where you see the market reacted. So this is if you're back studying, man. I'm telling you, like those six to seven hours a day, it can be it can happen for you. Like you see that, that's price falling. So if you just recognize that one bounce right here, or even this bounce right here, you see these bounces right here, off of this void right here, you come here, you could have sold it right here, caught that one move all the way down, and you would have had your reference points already cleared. You know what I'm saying? Like right here. There are people like, yo, that's far-fetched. All right, get closer. You could have went here as a TP. And then when the market came down here, you would have been able to study what's going on down here. Like, oh, shoot, what is going on down here? The only thing I can see this market respecting as far as price being intentional is this void, right? I see inverted all across the board, but I don't have that information on like a full hour. Well, I can go find it, you know, technically it's this one right here, this price point right here. You see how it's easy, easy to find when you actually just scale down that price point right there at uh 31,460, right? You see price come right there. You know what I'm saying? That's 74. And then I would just scale up to see, okay, it's 74. We're 74 at 74. I'm now, well, they're going to put me on 74, but I would just be studying. I'm like, all right, if it's 74, where's 74? But my thing is, if you create the zone for yourself, you're not here to be perfect. You're just here to have the, the minimum drawdown, right? Because a lot of these positions I enter, I promise you guys, outside of that one this morning, morning, I maybe weather. No more than like $150, $200 drawdowns now. Cause I'm just like, my stop losses literally be like in, in, in to reality, like I'm keeping it a buck. So even with this buy right here, I said it was 32,086. That was my, it was right here, down here, 086. Either way, my stop loss was right here at 053. Not 97, but it was like at 053. And that's only like, you know what I'm saying, like 300 some points. Only because this disciplines me to say, yo, if the market is going to react to these whole voids and inverted, I have to really be intentional about the, the positions I said. Look at that. It's treating as support too, guys. I'm not saying buy you 30 now, but yo, <laughs> it just fulfilled the imbalance. And look what's happening. I'm not saying anything, but. All right, I mean, even on the one minute, you see that void right there. So let's just say we delete this, all right? Because I can see it on the higher time frame. And, and all my voids are shaded. So if you just want to kind of take that, I didn't, you know, I ain't like saying that's a thing. But even if you were to study price right here, let's say if you were ready to buy, you see prices doing all that, doing all that, you see it running through, you see it come underneath the run back, bow move through right back. I'm saying now, this is what I'm saying. We can see prices come down here and linger in this void on a one minute and keep scaling up because we just created a crazy imbalance. But look how quick it filled it. That lets you know the quicker the filling of the rebalance, we may be ready to really go do business on the buy side because it's that one single price high standing out right here. Right? So, uh, yeah, to that point, when you study liquidity rates, just to recap, study what happens between 11.30 to 12.30. So all that's going to happen is you're going to see um, prices kind of go grab the liquidity on either side of the market based on how one side of the New York morning session was. Once that liquidity raid is over, it's either going to fail to take out a high if you're a seller, or it's going to fail to take out a low if you're a buyer on the sell side. Right. And it's not like some drastic low. It's just more so the range that's been provided. So if I'm looking at the one minute just to walk y'all guys through it, that liquidity rate that happened, it was right here. You see how this was a significant point of reference of, of lows that sent the market up. We failed to take those out. The moment you see a strong imbalance like that failing to take it out, that's a stretch of a candle. And we still fail to take that out. And we quickly move up. You see, we skipping price at this point. We come down right back on the money to that price. You you buy right here. 
and set your stop loss right there. That's 200 points. So this way, if you know the market comes down, we ready to go down. Now you're just going to wait for a point of reference to move up into an inverted, and then you sell it down. All right, so we, we quickly run here. Your only objective right here for afternoon liquidity rate back into one o'clock is here. You take it and get out the market. And then once you see the failure to take out the high, right, you use this as your point of reference. All right, this was the last bullish, right, inverted. Go ahead and draw it out. Right, because you'll see price fell and take it out. So once you get right here, get right here, get right here, yo, sell it. But your stop loss right above this high because price already swung low to tell you that it was not ready. Right, and this is the afternoon session. What do we get? A retracement one to three, 330 being the last volume move. Right, so that's 330. Where's three o'clock? 1530 right here. So 15, 15. They really provide much, but three o'clock did well. It almost did. All right, this was the last. Even if you wait till three thirty to trade, or even three o'clock, it's always gonna provide you one more move. Y'all don't know if y'all peep that all the time. I say three thirty to about three forty-five, four o'clock. That's when you really need to be out of the market because that's this is what they're gonna provide you almost every day. At the end of the day, you can, if anything, you miss all the action day. If you understand the market to a degree of liquidity, imbalance, or rebalance, you literally can catch something like this. And this is literally 132. That's like 1,300 points. Easy day. You know what I'm saying? And then you see price come through something like that. We just really like dummied everybody to think we was ready to go down off a move like that. Come here, we fell in and take out that low. We ran that low, and here we are now. Big, big run on buy side. So now it's just more so if you didn't catch the sale, this could have been it. So this is a live market. Look at that, right? So if you were selling, even though we just mapped out the, uh, we just mapped out the void that happened right here. If price runs through here, come back, bounce off of it, or if it come back, run through it again, and they resist off of it, based on the swing motion that sends this market down, you could possibly sell it here at 32,256 and just set a tight stop loss or even right above here. And if it takes you out, that just lets you know we're ready to come actually take out that buy side, right? So we ran through it right there. You would just want to see price close beneath it, open up, resist off of it but close underneath it right that doesn't mean like you buy right now but i just want to bring you a point of reference of why it came to that area so strongly that void right there right <laughs> that's why i say i don't necessarily respect bullish or bearish for value gaps to the notion that ict uses them that's not like a disrespect or anything it's just more so I always was curious of why price extended past my bullish and bearish for value gaps. And I was always like having to weather certain storms I didn't have to. But now that I have a point of reference, it's more so like, all right, cool. All right. So even with y'all seeing this in a live market, man, I bring this down to the price. I don't think it hit it. Yeah, it hit it precisely. And it reacted. That's two points of reference. I, I caught out for y'all. Boy. In here. Now, I'm not saying sell it here because you have a balance on the void here, right? But that was just clearly a run on buy side. We would need to see primarily this sell side get taken out. But if you sold it here, if you did, you know what I'm saying? Stop loss right here. And if you bought it at the void, put the stop loss right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not guessing. It's more so, what were you waiting on? Right? What were you waiting on? So you see how it's staggering right between these two levels. This isn't like, yo, either way, Ty, I'm about to go sell it here, buy it here, whichever one take me out. <laughs> Don't do that. <clears throat> Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, personally, the buy would have been the better, but it's Asian session, so I'm really not trading the industry. But if I was, I would respect the void because we just been moving up since Sunday. 
You know what I'm saying? So I would buy that void, which it bounced right on y'all for clarity because it bounced here and it bounced here. And see, now we're above this reference point for the inverted, right? So if we were to come up, my thing is let's look at the higher time frame, all right? So you see how that information, oh, perfect. Even on the five minute, all right? So I'm gonna delete the void. I'm gonna show you it's on the five minute too, right here, right? Point of reference. So if you trade a five minute, one minute too busy for you, look at that. I can't make that up, but doesn't this look like a run? Right, that was like a run and then a quick move up. We're now back at a discount based off what range, right? Based off the range here. All right, and we're at hell of a discount, All right? I would at least at minimum buy it back up to that high just because it's Asian, you know? But you still have a reference point right here where price could possibly come to like a 32, 237 area. But uh, if anything, I just set my stop loss at like 217. This way, if it can't get me, it can't get me. But that's just in reference to what I would do. But the fact that it's Asian, it's just kind of hard to decipher to say that I would really make that move in Asian with the indices. But you see right now, it's in this void. It just reacted to that void. Even this little small gap right here. That's why I love the one minute because you get to see everything. All right, so, I mean, you literally get to see everything. All right, so even that. But this now has provided what? Strong imbalance, right? So now I will use this as a point of reference. All right, because now this ran sell side but failed to take out this one so automatically my stop loss would probably sit right here but if i wanted to kind of be on the safe side i would just say yo come take me out at 217 because right here 246 even at 264 that's 200 points so in reference if you did a 0.01 this would be 20 dollars for you off of this one move even up to here to this high that'd be a quick 30 dollars if you did a 0.5, that'd be 60. 0 0.05, that'd be 60. If you did a 0 0.1, we'd be up $200 right now. All right, so just to see, show you how quickly you can really be in and out the market scalping. Because if we take out these highs, I would anticipate the market to kind of retrace right back down here or in here and then go up. But I wouldn't sell it. I would let it retrace right back down to see if it's going to be true to the buy and not take out that low. And then I get in on the better bid. This way, I really tighten on my stop loss. All right. See, don't fall for sucker moves like this because this is that, what they call it, like a flag pennant or some shit. Like, you know, you go here. I think this is the design for it. Like, it's right here, 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 something like that. And then it's supposed to, I don't know, break it. I don't know. Either way, pattern recognition is purposely set up for you to see that pattern as it is. So you make that gut decision that every other trade in the world would use based on the patterns that they showed you guys that are, this is why that is this, or this is why this is this, or that is why that is that. Whatever the case may be, you really want to think outside of that. All right. So you get to the point where, okay, there's my imbalance. There's my rebalance. I just need price to retrace at a better price. So this helps me identify how close do I need to be to this swing low to, sec to secure, one, my account. But also, I can be more risky with moves like that. You know what I'm saying? I can be more ballsy with uh, a higher lot size if I would have bought this void. Right now, if I would have bought here and had a stop loss here, could have been like a point two. This way... From here to here, instead of 200 point move, it's now a 400 point move. And I'm only willing to lose 200. So my only objective would be literally to take out this high. All right, take out this high. So then this way, I could be in and out of market and Asian on, off an of indice move. You know what I'm saying? But if you would have recognized this void right here around 330, and here we are 2020, right? 
14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 8 o'clock. This is 8 o'clock. This is 8 o'clock prime time Asia. So I guarantee you, GJ made a move like this too. Watch, I'm going to go to it and show y'all. Right? And that could have been your move for the night with Asia. Literally like a thousand point move almost. Right? And let's go look at GJ. Just so I, I know for a fact. Right here. This the one I use. But yeah, GJ made a move right here, the same move. <laughs> but it made it down. All right. Hold on, what is GJ doing? Is these my normal markups? Oh, so look, look, look. Y'all see, I ain't even been on GJ. Look at that. From Friday. Precision on the void, bro. We break the void. We come down. We come back up. We come back up. Now we precision on the void. <laughs> That's crazy. Look at that. Remember, these lines weren't drawn, guys. These lines were not drawn after the move had happened. Like, y'all know me by now. Like, I be leaving stuff just so you can see it, right? It literally bounced, 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 ran through, bounced, came through, took out the other side, came right back to the void, resisted off of it. Now, my thing is if she run back up here and uses that support, we're going to this area. Because look at the highs provided. Here, here, here. But that's just to show you that this stuff works on every pair. You just have to position yourself. You have to position yourself to get acquainted with your pair. Right. So just to recap, to enter on the one in five minute, you want to be able to understand one, your higher time frame direction, which will be the one hour. What is the one hour primarily doing after you've recognized has the daily candle taken out or even if you go to the top of the week. So every Sunday, I like doing calls on Sundays because you get to see how the week opens up. And if the week opened up down here, failing to take out that low, look how strong of momentum we have. Right. We have a stronger momentum for this candle to literally continue going up. So I'm only necessarily looking for buys. Right. Because now we have much of a bolder move, even with this. Right. And we are at a premium right here already with this. So maybe prices is reacting to the premium to necessarily go take out last week's high. And then maybe keep going up above it. Right. But I would have to see. Just basically, um, as the market moves up, look how she reacts or retraces down. So if I'm looking for an area, if it, the market does kind of, you know, give us a, a nice retracement back down, I would look for this to be the long goal, you know, and then this way I could scale up my positions, right? And then I would just use that as the gray area for real. That's top. So this should be yellow too. So, yeah. Other than that, man, um, if you learned something, man, drop some fires, bro. If you learned something, man, like that's just how that's really how I attack the markets, man. As simple, as simple as I can. All right. So this way I'm not overcrowding my chart one and I'm not overcrowding my thought process two. All right. So if you're looking at you 30, I'm not telling you what to do, but he knows the play has been set up for you, <laughs> right? Play has, and you see how it came right back down into it, right? So um, if it staggers around up here, we may be continuing going up in New York. But that's just, that's just how I see it. So if you guys don't have any questions, um, I hope you are enjoying the VIP services. Um, anything we can do to improve, work on, definitely reach out to me. Let me know. Let me know how y'all, you know, doing in these charts too, man. If you are a person um, who's struggling a little bit, you know what I'm saying, with some things, um, let me know. You know what I'm saying? And my, mentors, my mentorship, if you are in that, you know, our Tuesdays for my six-session people and my Tuesday, Thursdays for my 12-session people. And uh, Elena, I get with you, you know what I'm saying, so we can lock in some time this week too. But um, er everybody on here, like um, if you're in VRP, you get one, free one-on-one -on -one with me for an hour you know what i'm saying if you're not in my mentorship you know what i'm saying if you're in my mentorship i can't give you that extra session but if you are in my mentorship i mean if you're not in my mentorship and you're in vip 
just DM me like, yo, Ty, I'm, I'm looking at this pair or this is my pair. Just kind of want to help. Uh, if you could assist me, see if I'm in the right direction. Or if you don't need my help, I'm not Mr. Know it all. I take losses just like y'all take losses. I win just like y'all take wins. It's just, I, I want people to really, really get to the point where they understand to the point where they can profit at will. That's just my only objective, right? And as you can see, Price King, who bought? <laughs> I know somebody took the risk. <laughs> who bought it? Who bought you 30? Nobody? Y'all ain't take the risk? I set it up for you. <laughs> I set it up for you. I say, take out that high. I said, I told me I was going to take it, man. <laughs> Look, bro, see, and this is why I'm saying, like, VIP can literally put you in position, right? You just can't be scared to lose the money, right? This is a good short. Not saying, you know what I'm saying, it's not going to go up here, but I, I, I'll walk y'all through exact. Now I get excited because it's doing exactly what I said it was going to do. I, I said out of my mouth, if it was me, I would buy because of the void. Didn't I say that? I said that. Up 110 points. Easy day, man. Or $110, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what VIP is about. All right. So that being said, go light up the Telegram, free Telegram, and let them know what they missed, especially on the pair that we trade. And I'm glad I'm focusing on U30 primarily. Like, I'm not against Ethereum or anything like that anymore. It's just more so... I want to lock in on you, 30, the way it's been paying me, right? And study the DXY in tandem. Study that on a higher time frame, though, right? So if you see you, 30, moving up, yeah, we're already down here. Now, this is where I would want to be careful, like, for the middle of the week, right? Because you see, I got the DXY mapped out, too. I'm saying it's the void right here that I mapped out, I believe. Yeah, I put two cards on the lines there. But we reacted off the void. Excuse me. So if we ran sell side into the void, if we see U30 go down, all you got to do is just understand that there's a void right here on a, on a four hour time frame that I could possibly see um, the dollar going up to. And we may see that retracement down for U30 for a better price to buy up. But if I wake up in the morning, the dollar is down. I'm just looking at the daily now. All right. Yep. So it's closer to taking out this low right and if we use a point of reference look at the void down here all right all right so we can see price price significantly bounced at 103 223 that's like 100 points away right 100 points away so if we see the dollar come down here in london and tap this we could possibly see the market come up here and actually probably go to the extent of that void right there at like a 103. Just based on how I react. Hey, Osman, you is up, boy. <laughs> I just looked at U30. She went up again. She went up to 89. 80, 81. That's a level. That's a good short in the Asian, my brother. Good short. All right, but other than that, that's all I got. You guys reach out to me. You need anything, man. I'm here for you guys the best way possible. Let's continue this journey. So if you are somebody um, new to the chat, New to my, my style of training, just let me know where I can improve, man. I'm definitely down for adaptability. Um, I like taking these sessions more slow now because you guys have invested, you know, your 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 hard-earned money into a service that I'm hoping is doing you justice. All right. So other than that, y'all be safe. I'll drop this within the next 30 minutes. All right.